Okay, so you'll know if you get this real clunk and then clunk and then clunk when you're feeling this, you know that something's not quite right. When you keep your height the same, you will slide through and nothing changes. There's no clunk, there's no hit, there's no bounce. It's just slide through. Your feet stay solid, flat on the ground, and you slide through. As soon as something else happens and you rise, I see a lot of clunking, clunking, and you get this hit to the ground. So if you're getting that, something's gone wrong. Do it again. Now this ascension is so hard for a couple of reasons, but to start with, your body learns very quickly. And when you start Tiki Soto Itch, you know that it is the four corners of the room. You go square that way, square that way, square that way, and square that way. Your body understands that, and it works very well with these 90 degree angles. You move up to Cypher, you have to step on a 45 degrees, but your body is always those walls. So your body understands it. But then you turn into Sension, and your legs have to go this way, and your eyes have to go this way, and then you have to change through these angles, and it becomes very, very hard. The majority of people will either start too wide, and then go wider, or they start too skinny, and then get up being real skinny as they go through. It is so hard to keep that exact angle for all three of these moves, but that's what you need to try and do. Keeping that same angle there, as it is there, as it is there. It's exactly the same. And we do that by keeping our head in the center of our body at exactly the same point. That never changes. So if you've got someone there to watch you, stand right in front of them, and that line that goes through their head and through the center of their chest and down through their groin, their balance line, should never change. If there's no one else there, you should have yourself on the screen and seeing me as well. Make sure it doesn't change. Go, do it again. Right, this is what I'm saying. So, I use this bit here, going right down the centre of my garage, right down the line there. That goes directly through my head. So when I drop down to there, it's still directly through my head. What most of are doing is going this way before you go that way. Then this way before you go that way. And you have this rocking motion as you do it. But if you do it right, your head will stay through there. There's no sh uh, swinging to get yourself started. It's just power through the center. There's no swinging. It's just power through the center. Rather than going and move, and move. So pick something behind you if you can see yourself on the screen and get that line through the center. Got a lot of work to do on this one, guys. Do it again. Right, next thing. So what I focus on is that line. And I assume that line that's going straight down the middle of my body is where my partner would punch. Which means that when I do this block here, it's gonna go across that center line and get back to the other side. What a lot of people do is block up this way. Your punch is not coming from that 45. It's coming straight at you in front, which means it has to cover that line. Cover your centre line, not the line where your legs are pointing. A lot of people end up heading over there rather than heading there. That's where they are, right in front of us. That's where I strike. Through the centre. That's where I block. And that's where I strike. Through the centre. That's where I block. And that's where I strike. There's no one over there. Go. Put it all together. That's better. Now, because that's the center line, and I'm going from there, and I have to block across that center line, don't stop at the center line. Though. So if I take my shoulders, which are pointing here and here, that's where they're pointing when I'm standing square as well. Even though I turn slightly to have my chest pointing that way, this is still where my shoulders are, there and there which means that needs to be outside the line of my shoulders to give me my Chudan Uki position like that. But because you're using that center line now, a lot of you are using that center line and stopping, it still needs to be out to there with that V so that my little finger is on the outside of my shoulder before I turn and before I then I come in. So it's got to have everything. It's got to cross your center line, 
but then you're going to have that V with your elbow in, hand out, my other one, all the way back. Squeeze. Last 20 seconds, guys. Just get it across enough. Squeeze those lats. Then we'll move. Right, stop. Okay, we missed something. We've talked about this before, but I know there's lazy people out here that decide to ignore me. That is your knee. The point of your knee is your knee cap in the middle of your kneecap right there. So if I say one fist away from your knee, that's not one fist away from your knee. That's one fist away from the top of your knee. Your knee is the point of your knee, the center of your kneecap, which means we have to be there. That's one fist above your kneecap. That is nowhere near your kneecap. Even if you've got a really good sugar arch, some of are still going out to there before you move on. That's no good either. One fist just above my kneecap. So when I come down, squeeze back. So there are rub, not back there, not up there, directly above my kneecaps to open and squeeze. Do it again. You're missing that bit. Right, so I said before that your toes are so important. So when we flick to here, my left toes have not released. So I've gripped my toes to the floor and you have different levels of gripping to the floor. So when I'm in the stance, so I'm holding strong, my toes are gripped, but my arches are pushed down to the ground. So I've got this full, say level 10 grip to the floor. This one then is gonna release completely. So this one's gonna be a zero. But this one is gonna only drop to a five. So your toes are still gripped, but your arch is not pushed. And when your toes are still gripped, you've still got that connection to the floor, but you've got able to rotate your heel, but you don't release completely. If you release completely, you can very easily lose control. So that one releases completely, and that one only releases half to snap. And because that's only released half, you've got that connection to the ground to push, and then they both grab in sanch and arch. Something you need to practice is being able to shuffle your feet and land and grip in a perfect sancha dutch. What a lot of people do is they shuffle forward, then they move into sancha dutch afterwards. It has to be snap, push, oh, that wasn't a very good one, push and land in a perfect sancha dutch. And we focus our heels pushing out is how we get that perfect sancha dutch. Half, then push and then grab everything. Just think about your feet first. Think about your toes. Now, one of my instructors said this to me a wee while ago when I was a, little, a bit younger. It takes a lot of things in life, but if it looks like a duck and it smells like a duck, it's probably a duck, which means if it feels awkward, it's gonna look awkward, it's gonna be awkward. If it feels like there's no power, it's gonna look like there's no power and there's gonna be no power. So how it feels is so important. So if you feel awkward with this movement, something's going wrong, it will be awkward. It's gotta be just relaxed and smooth. You cannot be tense while you do Suryashi. It has to be relaxed. It has to be a point where you can grab your toes, but nothing else is tight, just your toes. And then when you get there, just your toes grab again, Everything's still relaxed, still relaxed, and then it's tight as you make contact. But too many people are tense, 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 and it looks like a duck. So relax, relax, grab, and punch. Relaxed means here. Tight means up here. Relax. Don't worry about the little things yet. Just try and relax, move, grab the floor. Okay, so one thing makes other things worse. So if you move your hands and too many things are going on with this, it's gonna make your feet awkward. But if you can just hold your hands there, your hands don't move, which means everything through here just stays in one piece, nice and solid. Once you've rolled to there, it's one, two. So everything's engaged, but it's relaxed. Then once you've grabbed your feet, then energy can then build up and then hips. Littlest knuckle, straight through the center. Other hand, straight through the center. 
So that center of your palm goes through the center of your hand to hit to there. Solar plexus, underneath your chest, not to your sternum, underneath your chest. Most ears need to be a little bit rounder and a little bit lower. There's your position there. So put it all together, hands stay still, body stays still, relax through center, and then hit low and rounded. And if it feels powerful, it'll be powerful. Right, now, I want you to think of these two moves as kind of a combination move. So the punch going forward should then help your part, elbow going back. So we come up to relax forward and grab to hit forward. This one stays at number 10, grab nice and tight. This one relaxes to be able to snap back, to be able to hit. And the timing should be one, two, three, four, five. So there is quite a good speed between the two. Don't hold there before, it's just hit and then hit. So you get that bounce forward and then snap back. So just do it first and then we'll put some little things into it. They're connected, but they're not rushing. Now, there's a key to this elbow. The reason this elbow is different to every other elbow is because you're using two hands. Now, because you're using two hands to get your optimum power, you need to be using both hips. But what most people do is they step back and they use their right hip to try and do this. And when you use your right hip, one, two, you get power in this one, but you get no power in this one which means the key to this elbow is going one, two, three. And the connection should be on the three. Not one, two, but one, two, three. Step, hips go back one, they go forward two, past the center, and then they come back to the center on three, which means you're getting hip movements for both techniques. Because when your right hip goes forward, that's going to slingshot your arm forward. But by the time you've done that, you've snapped back, which has slingshot your other arm into it. And you get the timing of the two. Back, forward. Slow it down if you need to. Try that. Okay, so if you think about what you're actually doing, you're doing an elbow. And an elbow is a short technique. So if you're doing a short technique and your hips are doing this and doing really big, it doesn't work together. My hips only do that much. The knot of my belt only moves a couple of inches. That's it. There's a lot of people trying to do this and get a really big wind up. Elbows, short technique, means your hips have to be a lot shorter. One, two, three. If you go big, it creates big. Small, creates small. So a C-step doesn't have to be into your other foot and out. A C-step just has to have a curve to it. So because I do a short C-step, it creates short hips. Big C-step creates big hips. Think about everything. Do it again. Okay, next bit. So one of the things I love about Sanction is the texture to it. So there's so many fast bits and strong bits and slow bits and pauses. It gives a real... Um, dynamic kind of feel to this card because it has those textures to it. So you've got this nice, slow, strong bit at the start, and then we stop, we pause, and we explode into these movements, but then we slow and control into the next bit. Then explode, explode, pause, and small. Center line, straight down there with the thing on my roof. My elbow is pointing to that center line, right to the middle. Then my hand drops to that center line and then folds to the side. There is no crossing of that line. It drops to that line and then folds out. Chudanuki is not up and down. Chudanuki is out and back. So when you come to here, it's out and back. Doesn't rise above Chudan. Hojouki. Reinforced block, center line, small to there. Perfect, normal, chudanuki. Go from there, explode, power, and then control without crossing that line. Go. 
Right, I'm getting the hang of all these little screens in front of me, starting to be able to see everyone's mistakes. So, most common thing that I'm seeing from here, if you watch my feet, is leaning and then leaning. So we take our weight off our right foot and put it on our left to then be able to fold. And the most common way of seeing that is if this foot, my heel comes off the ground. So even though I'm not very close to you guys, I can see that your heel comes off the ground, which means you have to be changing that balance, which is no good. So from there, your heels stay on the ground. And when your heels stay on the ground, it means your balance hasn't changed, which means this foot, my heel can turn out, and this foot can slide all together, creating a perfect midi sanction arch in a perfect position. So none of this, no heels off the ground. Stay strong. Do it again, go. Okay. So you can kind of get lost sometimes on focusing on so many little things. So especially when we did the ascension last time, I was mentioning covering yourself in the correct angles and how you move with the right hip and push and staying down low. You can start to focus on all those things and forget what you're actually doing. You have to think about that you are actually striking and striking. So it, if everything else goes wrong, there has to be a strike or a block to it. It has to have some power going in the direction that you want to go. But you can fall into the trap of focusing on all these little things and your hand just then ends up being placed where it needs to be rather than actually hit, hit. So just for a couple, forget about all those little things and just focus on hit, hit, and get power into your strike, then mold it with the little things instead. Go. Just forget about the little things for a second and just hit. Good. Now, one of the hardest things to get out of this bit is the correct angles. So, using the room that you're in and getting those 45 degrees and even having tape on the ground and putting down in the right angles is real crucial. And this will get you exactly the right angle. So what you need to do, if I'm pointing at you when I do this, Gaydan, I need to go back on exactly that same line. Obviously we do it on a 45, which means the create line I create here has to be exactly the same line here. The most common thing that people do is go forward and create this line, and then they go too far back with their leg, creating a different angle. And the reason for that is they pull their hip around. And when you pull your hip around, it's very hard to stop at exactly the right point. But when you pull your hip back, you get the straight line through there. And your foot goes in a straight line. But as soon as your foot creates an arc, it's very hard to stop it at exactly the right spot. So as you go down, try and get a straight line from there to where it finishes, and then pull your hip back, not around. And the crucial part about that is that I don't turn myself, I square myself. So if this is where I hit, I turn my chest to where I was, and then I keep snapping. And this gets you that perfectly straight line. So don't pull away from it, pull through it. Go, try that, try and get exactly the right angle. But the problem with that is, that when I square to try and pull it back this way, the most common thing that people do is they lean forward and then have to snap back. Because it's quite hard to square and keep yourself up to throw yourself back. This takes lower stomach strength up and through your obliques and through your lats and power through your thighs. So you're not pulling back and dropping, you're pulling back up. Keeping yourself up nice and tall as you're pulling yourself up. And this will keep you same heights rather than falling forward and snapping back. So all these things have to go right. Hit, square, stay up nice and tall. Now, if I do this other corner, this is my center line again. A lot of you are going all the way over here before you go over there. That doesn't make sense. 
and it's completely useless. Why would I go all the way over here? If the punch was coming down that line of that center thing on my roof, there's no point going all the way over here before I go over there. So the punch is coming at me this way, which means I only have to go there. That's it. Just past my center line, catch it, push it across. Bigger I make a foot movement, bigger hand movement, completely useless. Small. Then angle, hip back, square, get that right angle. Do it again, go. Right, so you've shuffled forward into a Miki Sanchandach. You've stepped back into Harari Sanchandach. And then you've stepped forward into a Miki Sanchandach again. Three perfect Sancha darts that should be exactly the same. The same distance apart, the same angle with your toes, the same balance down the center. Most people, if you start with a horrible one, it then gets more horrible and then gets more horrible. Some people will go good one and then it'll go bad and really bad. This is the hardest one, that corner one. Being able to get a good Sancha darts pointing on the corner. Completely forgetting about the walls in your room and focusing that that is now the front and that is the way I'm pointing. But people's brains take over and they think, no, that's the front of the room. And your feet start pointing towards the front of the room. It just has to be, now that's the front. Everything points that way, shoulders, hips, and my stance. So this time I want you to go up and stop. Perfect Sancha Dutch. Move, perfect Sancha Dutch. Move, Perfect Sancha Dutch. Then do your one, two, and then make sure you've got a perfect Sancha Dutch going that way before you move. Check your feet. So important that your Sancha Dutch is right. Okay, so now everyone's card will be that just that slightly little bit different from each other, depending on what you, how big you are and how wide your shoulders are and all that sort of stuff. So this is a Harari Sancha Dutch, which means my left foot is in front. When I then go to the corner, it has to be a Miggy Sancha Dutch. So some people will do quite a good step forward with this one to get that. Other people, it won't be as much. As long as that when you point to that corner, you are doing a Miggy Sancha Dutch, which means that's now the front and that your heel and toe are perfectly in line 90 degrees from going that way. Same when you turn this way. It has to be a Hadari Sancha Dutch going to that corner. But if you slightly go too far back, your Sanchan Darts is pointing too much of a 90 degrees. So it has to get those angles right so that you are heel and toe in line, pointing the right way. And that takes a bit of trial and error on how far you move your foot to do that. Some ears will be a little bit bigger, some ears will be a little bit smaller. It doesn't matter as long as it's strong, small, and it's a Miggy Sanchan Darts. One more time, we'll move on. Go. When you get to this next bit, when you're first learning a carter, the end positions of each spot is the most important. Then when you get better at it, how you get there becomes more into play. But when you first learn things, the end position is the most important thing to start with. This is the end position for C engine. So if, if I was looking that way, my wrist, would be the center of my forehead. But I'm not looking that way, I'm looking that way. Which means my finger is actually in line with the front of my head, rather than it being too far forward because I've turned and pulled back this way to squeeze down. That's the difference between a Chudanuki going that way, uh, sorry, Jodanuki going that way, and a Jodanuki pointing that way. I have to pull back and down because my head's facing to the side. Bottom hands. One fist above your knee cap. Then I open my hand, and then I, as much as I can, get my fingers pointing behind me. And to do that, my arm will bend slightly, just slightly, to get to there. And you force those fingers up so that it's flat to there. That is the engine. Focus point is there, that bend in your wrist, just where your pulse is, and under here, and under your thumb. 
to pull that thumb down to keep your fingers nice and straight. So forget about how you're getting there to start with. And we're just going to go one, two, get the final position right first. Go. Your body takes over a lot of the time, guys, and your body wants to do the things that it naturally wants to do. So when your hand is up like this, naturally, your elbow wants to be higher or the same height as your wrist. That is how your body works. It wants to push up and your fingers to point down. When you focus under here, it gives you that squeeze down there. That is what we need. And when you're pulling your thumb in, that helps pull through here and down into your lats through your obliques, which helps your sugar arch. So this actually tightens up and helps your sugar arch along with that. When this is relaxed and wrong, it makes your sugar arch harder. Everything works together to help each other. So your stance is helping your hands, and your hands pulling down and through will help your stance into there. Do it again. Go. Squeeze in. Squeeze down. This. So this is the front, and I'm 90 degrees to here. This is why our blocks are this way, not around. So if I was going this way, it would be around like that to be able to defend a punch coming forward. But because I'm side onto it, the punch is coming this way past me, which means that's my block going that way. Forward and back, not around. So that when you come back, it's forward, it never goes past my face to go back. What a lot of you do is go past your faces and curl around it. So it has to be forward and back, forward and back, not around and cover your eyes. Go. So I talked about when we uh, did Cypher last week that you're sort of twisting your body to create energy and then you release your energy after that. So if you think about this first position to here, this squeeze of your wrist and everything tightens up through there and this pull down through is actually creating energy and stress and then we let ourselves go. So hold that first one and squeeze that first one to create, create energy and power and then we swing back and release that energy and then we tighten up again to create energy to then release. So even though it's done slow, you can still create that energy and then the release snaps you back into the next one. And same as what we did before, straight through that center to be able to cause those straight lines. Last 20 seconds, then we'll do the whole thing, and then we're done.